Sometimes it's just time for them to go. Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're gonna be refreshing some annual beds out here in the uh, front garden. Went yesterday and picked up some fine pine bark and some compost. Uh, they didn't have it mixed together already, so I got a yard of fine pine bark soil conditioner and a half a yard of compost. It'll just get mixed in together as it goes into the cart and goes out here. Okay, so here, using this flat shovel as I get it out of the back of the truck, you can see that pine bark soil conditioner, and then there is the, uh, is the compost. Just got it from a bulk place in Raleigh rather than uh, getting these things in uh, individual bags. Uh, you don't have to use pine bark soil conditioner. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but it is available to us here in the southeast, so uh, I do like to use it for my uh, flower beds. Let's catch up with what I've done so far and why I have done it. Uh, first of all, we went and got uh, many flats of pansies for this season. We've got pansies, we've got snapdragons, we've got some mustard that's a purple color, uh, dianthus, got several different things that are gonna be going in. This is gonna be pansies around the turf area in the front. So I, I mowed this uh, zoysia grass probably for the last time. We're supposed to get a potential frost tonight and tomorrow night, one or the other of them is probably gonna put the, put the turf to sleep. We have warm season grasses here. This is gonna go, you know, the, the color is gonna just go out of this turf really quickly on these uh, cool nights. So again, I've mowed it for the last time, then sadly pulled out all these flowering things because I believe they were gonna go to mush here in the next uh, couple of days. Although for me, an annual in my area, the African basil is quite cold tolerant. I think it will continue to bloom. So I still have lots of things out here for the pollinators, even though I jerked some of them out, you know, and it was gonna happen regardless. The flowers were gonna be gone in two nights anyway. Uh, this again is a combination of compost and pine bark. So why do I treat the annual spaces differently than I do uh, my perennials, my shrubs, my trees, it's because they have such a short season. And so I don't want them to have to fight for their life to be able to root into the ground. If they're only gonna last for six, seven months, something like that. If they spent the first three months just trying to figure out how to get through really compact soil, uh, I don't think I'd get as much return out of them. So my vegetable garden, and spaces that we reserve for annuals do get treated a little differently. So they get additional compost between seasons. Uh, for me, I can use this pine bark soil conditioner here because it's available, but again, you can just use compost uh, if you want to, a light layer of compost. If I was going to skip winter planting, so if I wasn't gonna do these pansies right now, I might actually just do these with wood chips. And that over the course of six months before I plant my spring annuals back in here again, 
the Gomfrino or Zinnias or Cosmos or whatever the heck it is, uh, those wood chips would break down enough for me to plant in next spring. So if you're just putting it to bed for the winter, wood chips might be an inexpensive option for you. But here, uh, here we go. I'm, just, I'm gonna lay these pansies out and then we'll talk more about uh, the time of year that I'm putting these in and uh, other details. One other thing I did in this process was I edged the turf. So after I mowed the grass out here, I went around and re-edged uh, around it. This zoysia grass has a tendency to try to creep into the bed, especially the way we do this with our annuals hanging over them all season. Uh, it's a little off-colored where the annuals were hanging over, but also the they were they were at war with one another for several months. And so I did have to cut a little bit of zoysia grass back out of the bed. So that's part of this reset as well, is, is re-edging, re-establishing a line in the sand where the zoysia can go. Uh, and it'll, again, it'll try to creep back in there next year once it wakes back up. Uh, that's just a battle. Battle we have, it's better than Bermuda grass. Uh, it's a little, you know, all season long, only a little bit made it up into the bed. If it would have been zoysia, it would have been, or I mean, if it had been Bermuda, it would have been all up in everything. Well, uh, the timing on the pansies for me, I like the soil temperature to be below 65 degrees. So I've got a super inexpensive soil thermometer, or there's a website you can actually go to and uh, see the soil temperature in your area. It's kind of a snazzy little uh, website. And I, when the soil temperature falls below 65, I put the pansies in. When it goes back up above 65, uh, towards 70 in the spring is when I put my tomatoes and my peppers in. So it's good information to have. If you put those, sometimes you put things into soil that's too cold, it will really stunt them. If you put things into soil that's too warm, you know, these cool season things, uh, it can also, it can sometimes just stretch them uh, actually on the uh, pansies. We'll go for really bright colors um, out here. The blue isn't, um, it's a brighter blue. I don't, I don't, I tend to stay away from the darker purple. Uh, pansies overall you think I mean they look great uh, when you're out shopping for them but when you put them in the in the yard sometimes they, they just disappear from distance so the lighter blue ones tend to show up a little better of course yellow white orange those are really your friends and they look great uh, in the uh, winter time uh, I do this completely random those were thrown out there you saw I went through and I just literally threw blues and yellows you know in with one another and then i planted them as fast as i could go uh, and so i'm trying to end up with it as random uh, as possible it's really hard for people to do that tonight you know most people including me myself you know would put them in so little soldiers in lines and it, overall it just doesn't it looks better when they're when they up seem random fertilizer wise uh pansies are pretty heavy feeders and so I will. For, I need to fertilize this, and I need to far, fertilize my fall vegetable garden or winter vegetable garden as well. And so I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to use an organic, uh, an organic fertilizer. I could use something like Flower Tone as an example of that. But I need to get on that. Uh, pansies are the about the only thing we don't do from seed. Uh, some people do, and and have a have an okay time doing it. Uh, I I tend some of the better varieties the deltas uh some of the, some of the newer varieties uh, i i just prefer to buy them they're great performers in the landscape uh and much easier than doing your yourself from seed in my opinion although we do tons of stuff from seed here and if you're following along with the channel you'll see that in the spring almost all of our su spring our summer vegetables and almost all of our summer flowers we do right here in-house pansies are the exception to that these trays are known as 606s, which means there's just six, six packs in them. And they're a little bit bigger than a lot of the other annuals that I get. And the roots are not very root bound, so I didn't break them up. If you might get 
Sometimes you get smaller cells on these pansies and it can just be basically solid roots. You might want to pull at them just a bit or sometimes I'll just break the very bottom of the roots off of them and that'll get them uh, spreading out. Uh, more frequently you'll see, you'll see uh, 12 packs of four um, in the tray, which is 48 plants. This is 36 plants. And again, they're a little bit bigger, a little more established going into the ground. Very basic set of tools. I've got my trenching shovel, which you guys always see. I've got the flat shovel because I got the, using the pickup truck. Uh, I didn't even use that. I barely, I use that garden rake a little just to smooth the, uh, the bark and the compost out. And I always have my little fork here. When I'm removing these annuals and stuff, it makes it easy picking up large piles and then a trowel uh, and a soil thermometer. Uh, that's pretty much uh, all the tools that, uh, and, and more tools than I need, honestly, uh, to, do, to get this job done. But I, uh, I enjoy this transformation in the fall. It's always a little sad pulling out uh, all these summer flowers because they do tend to be right at peak, you know, about the time that you're gonna get your first frost. But again, I kind of, uh, I kind of enjoy that. You can see there's tons of trays. Steph is filming and there's four trays in front of her plus more on the cart over here. So lots and lots more pieces that are going into the ground. But I wanted to shoot one separate video here that's just the process and my reasoning for redoing uh, flower beds. Uh, and I don't do them each time. So this will not happen again for our spring annuals. So this is uh, this bark and compost blend just goes on when we're taking the summer annuals out and putting these pansies in. When we put the summer annuals in here that we do from seed later, they'll just go right into this mix when the pansies get pulled out. So there's no additional. It's just one time a year uh, for that uh, transformation. One other task after I fertilize will be to water. So <laughs> number one, the, the fertilizer is a little smelly, the organic fertilizer. So I want to get it watered in and I want to get these pansies watered in. This is a time of year where it just doesn't rain very much for us in central North Carolina in zone 7B. This is really our driest time of the year. Uh, from a late winter, early spring is statistically our driest time of the year, but this is actually our driest time of the year if we didn't have any kind of tropical rains, tropical storms. They slant the numbers a little bit in September and October. Without them, it just doesn't rain. It has, it's no rain in the next 10 days. So I'll water them in well. Days are shorter, nights are cooler, so they don't need a lot of water. But I'll probably have to water them again in about four or five days. I'll just dig around with my finger down uh, around them and see if they need it and then water them. And when I water them, I water them very thoroughly and then I want them to dry out. I actually want to try to get them rooted in this as much as possible. They're not going to do a whole lot of growing. They'll do a little growing but most of what's going on here is they'll get themselves established, get themselves rooted in, and then when it gets warmed up on the other side of January, they'll just explode, and this will just be nothing but solid color around these beds. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because there's an upcoming video with this all finished with um, a lot, a lot of transformation going on here in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.